Uh, everyone on the East Coast and good morning to all of you on the West Coast. My name is Max Farrell. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of WorkHound. And I wanna thank you all for attending today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to discuss driver feedback from 2020, a year unlike any we have ever seen before. Each year, our team collects driver feedback data from the entire population of drivers who use WorkHound so that we can equip the industry with aggregated data to make change happen and retain more drivers. And today we're excited to share these findings with all of you. Um, I'm coming to you live from our uh, quieter office in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Our team's been remote since uh, March and performed admirably well. Um, and uh, as we get started, I wanna thank a few people from our team for making this presentation possible. Uh, thank you to Mark Ellers, Corey Banks, Paul Castronova, and Katie Love for your tireless work to bring this report together. I can't thank you all enough for the work you have done to put, to put into this report and make it happen. Uh, as we get going, I wanna bring attention to the tools within your view. Uh, we will allow time at the end of this to answer any questions you may have. Uh, so please feel free to ask your questions in the chat uh, to the panelist uh, or the moderator um, or the uh, Q&A resource. During today's discussion, we'll cover a, uh, a few topics. Uh, first off, we'll talk about how we collect feedback at WorkHound. We'll share a summary of the statistics that, uh, that we receive. We'll decode the top three feedback themes, discuss some ways that carriers are taking action on different issues, and uh, we'll open up the discussion for Q&A. Um, so before we look at the uh, results of the 2020 driver feedback analysis, I want to overview how we gathered this data. At WorkHound, we gather anonymous, real-time feedback from thousands of frontline workers across the country. We receive driver feedback from drivers via a regular text message asking drivers to share how work is going and why they feel that way. For trucking companies, our focus at WorkHound is to help carriers and their drivers create a real-time feedback loop, as you see in the image. Weekly, we ask drivers to share the good, the bad and the ugly. As you can imagine, we get all three. Drivers receive the, this message uh, asking for anonymous feedback and the link is always live. They share exactly what's on their mind in 90 seconds or less and feedback is continually uh, reviewed using keyword and sentiment analysis. Each unfiltered category, comment is ultimately categorized into standardized themes. So here's why we gather feedback this way. Surveys by nature introduce bias. This is not a survey. We ask open-ended questions so that drivers can introduce the honest concerns. This format allows drivers to share top priorities so that carriers can get right to the point. Feedback is presented in a way that can be addressed quickly at the speed of business. Closing the feedback loop, which we define as taking action because of the feedback, builds worker confidence and loyalty. Understanding how a feedback loop is closed is also important for the data we'll share today. Getting feedback is good, acting on it is better, and telling people what you did is the cherry on the sundae. So once an issue is addressed, feedback evolves. So before we get into the data, I wanna share how carriers are responding to feedback. They do it a few different ways. They address urgent issues individually with drivers. And this is how we at WorkHound create measurable retention opportunities. We see companies drive change by acting on feedback to improve the company, whether it's a small or a strategic change. And then companies also show empathy by responding to drivers weekly in a fleet-wide message. And at WorkHound, we call that a broadcast. The demographics of the trucking industry continue to change, but here's a quick overview of the industry. The average age of drivers is about 55 years old. 95% of drivers use smartphones daily. 89% uh, annual turnover rate across the industry. And we know that there's a, a 50,000 driver shortage. So even with the average age of drivers increasing, there's an increasing adoption in technology. And we're combining this with the steady turnover rates in the industry and the con continuing concern of a shortage across uh, the industry. So in the feedback we received, all drivers work with carriers that are as small as about 60 trucks, all the way to companies that have well over 2,000 trucks. 
We have drivers hauling almost every type of freight from dry van to tanker to intermodal. And we also see feedback from a mix of company drivers and owner operators, but mostly from company drivers. In 2020, we received more than 38,000 comments from nearly 13,000 drivers, who on average left about three comments per person. In total, this feedback is for 64 trucking companies with uh, 198 average workers at each company. And upon every comment, drivers are asked to communicate how they're doing on a scale of one to 10. In 2020, that score averaged 6.39. While feedback is collected anonymously, at times individual comments uncover concerns on a micro level. And this is presented two different ways for carriers to take action. The first way is to request a driver's identity to directly address an issue. In this, in this uh, situation, drivers have the choice to say yes or no. And if they say yes, carriers can talk with them one-on-one -on -one to resolve their concern. In 2020, more than 5,000 drivers were retained at carriers because of this feature. Now, in the circumstances where drivers choose not to reveal or a carrier determines that the identity isn't critical for resolving the concern, there's another feature. It's called a one-time notification. And this allows carriers to send a message to anonymous drivers with information that equips them to res with a resolution to their concern. In this past year, more than 7,000 one-time notifications were sent. In a minute, we'll look at the top five themes, but first, in 2020, we noticed that logistics, once again, was the most common topic of feedback. Today, we'll mostly talk about logistics, equipment, people, pay, praise, and the COVID theme. You'll also notice that while communication as a theme didn't make the top five, it does appear in many of the themes, highlighting the importance of clear and concise communication with the drivers. Though logistics does tend to be the dominant theme throughout the year, it demonstrates a pretty consistent decline over time. Logistics is a theme including feedback related to operations, load planning, delays, and challenges with routes. In January, logistics made up about 28% of all comments. By December, logistics only represented 16% of comments. However, the theme of people shows the exact opposite trend. Comments of the people theme started the year relatively lower in frequency at 18%, but surpassed logistics and frequency at the end of July and finished the year at 27% of all comments. We also took a look at the themes based on satisfaction score. Praise is a unique theme in that it exclusively covers positive comments. For example, a comment that simply says, I'm happy to drive for my company would be categorized as praise. Therefore, it isn't surprising that these comments average a satisfaction score of over nine points when the average is slightly over six. People also tends to be a positive theme and maintains the next highest average satisfaction score. Of the top themes, pay is consistently the lowest ranked theme, nearly a whole point below the average. This year, our team spent time identifying critical comments an important form of feedback that captures most of a company's instant retention opportunities. These substantive comments show a blend of urgency and low satisfaction that indicates they are worthy of greater attention from company stakeholders. In 2020, critical comments made up more than 4,000 mentions or nearly 11% of all comments. Nearly 2,500 workers left these critical comments. And while the average comment length for comments was 214 characters, critical comments were 359 characters on average, meaning that when drivers are frustrated, they're offering a lot of details. This shows that lengthier comments may provide greater retention opportunities. The distribution of comments here shows that despite being frequently commented on, issues around equipment tend to not be as critical as some of the themes with fewer mentions, like people and pay. This distribution emphasizes that greater attention should be focused on people and pay. And so we will spend some extra time on these two sections today rather than other areas of the business, since those two sections contain a higher density of retention opportunities. We'll dive deeper into what those opportunities look like shortly. Despite the challenges of the year, comments have remained surprisingly positive. 
In fact, as a percentage of total comments, there were more positive comments in 2020 than there were in 2019. As you can see in the graph, positive comments represent orange, neutral is gray, and blue represents negative sentiments. I know trucking has a habit of always trying to fix what's broken, but there's a sizable number of drivers celebrating what's working well. Sentiment is not evenly distributed across the themes. Praise, people, and uncategorized comments have a greater likelihood of being positive than comments of other themes. Now, let's talk about what we saw in the people feedback in 2020. People is the third most frequently mentioned theme, representing around 20% of all comments. Outside of praise and uncategorized, it is the most likely theme to have a positive sentiment with 38% of the comments being positive. Commenters within the people theme frequently shout out others. Companies we work with are maximizing the impact of this positivity by distributing these shout outs through other internal channels. When, com when comments in the people theme are negative, this is likely due to interpersonal or departmental conflict. Now, as we look through this data, we want to point out that truck driving is a complex boundary spanning role. Because of this, feedback in the people theme covers a number of different populations in a driver's environment. In a report released by the University of Arkansas, here is how a boundary spanning role is defined. Trucking can be a stressful career, partly because drivers are expected to juggle a multitude of relationships and interactions representing various, often conflicting organizational goals and expectations. Their boundary spanning role is complex. They must interact with various company employees, try to meet customer expectations, and represent the company to the outside world. Thus, it's important to clearly define how drivers interact with each role due to the various hats they are required to wear. And we see that in driver feedback. So who were drivers talking about? The vast majority of comments are evenly distributed between interactions with drivers, support staff, and managers. Managers appear in comments around 34% of the time. And while it might be expected that the relationship between drivers and managers is contentious, most often it's actually pretty positive. However, one bad interaction between a driver and a manager will cause drivers to quickly express a desire to leave. On the presentation, we've added some examples of what we're seeing feedback, uh, what we're seeing in feedback about management, support staff, and fellow drivers. In this comment about management, this driver feels like they aren't getting the support they need despite taking the time to talk about it multiple times. When it comes to support staff, this driver feels disrespected by planners due to bad planning and a shortage of miles. On this comment, speaking about other drivers, we see drivers are also quick to talk about fellow drivers in the rumor mill within the people theme. We also took a look at the positive comments by relationship. Comments about customers are far likely to be less positive than compared to the average comment in the people thing. It's clear from the driver comments that miscommunication, long waits, and poor expectation setting were the focus of their dissatisfaction with customers. Comments about new drivers, managers, and support staff are very frequently, uh, are very frequent, and only 22% of them are positive. Poor training and poor communication are likely causes of this frustration. We recommend providing as much support for new team members as possible to ensure they can succeed quickly within your organization. Experienced drivers can also be resentful of new drivers that appear to get special treatment or unfair rates. Here's an example of this where a driver shared, I had high hopes for this company. Great people, but way too much sitting around for me. At least the new guys get good runs. I did too for a bit. We broke out comments about support staff to understand the challenges across the company. Now on the dispatcher side, 40% of all support staff comments were about them. When drivers feel the dispatchers aren't communicating back or responding in a timely manner, then they feel that they can't do their job effectively. It is essential that drivers feel supported by staff and that their work is met with equal effort from dispatchers. As one driver said, what's the point? You guys don't listen. I've complained about dispatchers. I've complained about the health insurance. You still have crappy health insurance and lazy dispatchers. These guys don't hold back. 
When it comes to maintenance, downtime at the shop means lost earnings to the driver. However, when drivers lose trust in shop staff, it's a recipe for disaster. Then it's not just an issue of money, but safety. Drivers that don't trust shop staff don't feel safe on the road. Like this driver said, shop works the hardest not to work. And that is putting truck driver lives at risk. The primary concern is communicated in our feedback regarding office staff is that they can be rude and disrespectful. This makes drivers reluctant to deal with office staff, meaning small problems have the potential to become much bigger over time. Here's a comment from a driver that said, I have a problem that myself and a few other drivers are having. Because it seems that asking a simple question will get you talked to rude and very disrespectful. If we can't ask questions about our job, what are we supposed to do? I had a problem with my truck this morning and I didn't want to talk to the woman in the office because she will talk down to you and raise her voice at you. Regarding planners, the data suggests that drivers have the most conflict with planners. In the driver's eyes, poor planning is often the source of many problems and can be prevented. The issue becomes compounded when they don't understand why last minute changes are made. It can feel like planners are being dishonest and that favoritism is a factor. Here's what one driver said. These planners are a joke. If our fleet manager has us planned and approved on loads, why do planners come back and change everything for their buddies? Now, as you can see here on this chart, comments about planners are less than half as likely to be positive compared to other roles. Given the relationship between drivers and dispatchers, it's no surprise that they are the most frequently discussed support staff in driver comments. 25% of comments with, within the people theme are also classified as praise. Similarly, support staff are frequently the subject of driver praise. However, as we know, poor planning is a huge source of frustration for drivers. With around 10% positive comments regarding planners, it's clear the driver's relationship with them is strained. Focusing on good communication habits is the key to promoting a healthy relationship between drivers and planners. There's a few different ways that we think about addressing people issues. Earlier, we talked about driving being a boundary spanning role. So we should remember that this is a stressful career because drivers are expected to juggle a multitude of relationships and the interactions representing various, often conflicting organizational goals and expectations. You can help by creating initiatives that build the familiarity between drivers and support staff needed to develop trust and mutual respect. Additionally, Clear communication can be your solution to informal networks or the rumor mill. The driver community counts on each other for information when the company fails to make something clear. Be transparent about changes to policy and workflow so drivers don't need to rely on informal networks for important information. And lastly, help new team members. When new team members have trouble acclimating, it's hard on everyone. Drivers feel that they are left picking up the slack when new people aren't prepared for their role. Ensure adequate training at all levels of the organization to alleviate the burden from veteran drivers who feel responsible for orienting new people. And with that, the next thing we'll look at is pay. Pay is the fourth most common theme, representing just over 17% of comments. This theme is also notoriously negative. Over 50% of all pay comments are negative. Now, many people in the industry assume this is mainly because of drivers demanding higher pay. Our feedback indicates that comments about rates and bonuses are twice as likely to be critical compared to other pay, pay comments and are likely signals of retention opportunities. However, our data shows that it's even more nuanced than that. Though some drivers are unhappy with the pay rate, um, most drivers are commenting because they need assistance navigating complex pay systems. It is arguable that trucking has one of the most complex pay structures in all of North America. Even greater numbers of commenters express concerns that they are expected to do a lot of work that is uncompensated or fear that they aren't getting enough work to meet their financial objectives. It's clear that from our data, setting realistic pay expectations with drivers and working with them to make certain that they meet their financial goals has more of an impact on driver satisfaction than the pay rate. To better understand pay, we broke out the comments by issue. Most 
drivers are happiest on the road. And we saw that 36% uh, of comments was about wasted time. And so we know being a driver requires more than just turning miles. Unfortunately, a lot of these activities aren't compensated. Spending a high percentage of their time on uncompensated activities was the top concern for drivers talking about pay. One driver said, I wanna know why drivers don't get paid for empty miles they run to pick up a load. The next one was lack of work, which accounted for about 28% of pay comments. 2020 was a year with a lot of uncertainty. Many drivers had concerns for their job and felt insecure about the future. This stress made it more difficult to cope with at times that freight was slow. It also made drivers particularly sensitive to the manner in which loads were distributed. Over a quarter of the comments coming in on pay expressed concerns that they wouldn't be able to meet their financial obligations because of a lack of work. One driver said, still waiting on workload to improve. It's every week now we don't get full loads and receive a day off. And this is no typo. When I was told I was hired on that, there would be an occasional down day, but not every week. 22% of drivers expressed uh, pay problems. Paycheck errors are a consistent source of frustration. Companies need to know that correcting these errors is a top priority. However, in circumstances that an error is actually a misunderstanding, it's important that companies take the time to explain the complex pay systems clearly without marginalizing a driver's understanding. Increased pay transparency early on can help make the company and the driver aligned on expectations for pay so that there's no surprises when the check comes. Failure of a company to communicate effectively before these problems arise means that there's a risk that misunderstandings will be interpreted by drivers as dishonesty. And this can jeopardize the company's reputation among drivers. And this driver even presented a solution here saying, figure out a way to make it easier for drivers to keep up with their miles and their pay. Uh, for example, 40 cents per mile times X amount of miles instead of some formula. Simple is good, but transparency is the best. Often pay feedback comes in the form of questions. At 41%, comments about pay have a third more questions than any comment, uh, any theme that received comments. Now, many assume comments about pay are mainly complaints about the pay rate, but the abundance of questions about the feedback indicate that commenters are seeking clarification about complex pay policies and structures. It is not simply an opportunity to vent frustrations. As noted before, pay is a frequently negative theme. As expected, negativity around pay rate is particularly common. On the other hand, comments regarding bonuses tend to be particularly positive, though somewhat infrequent. Bonus programs that are clearly explained and obtainable are powerful incentives, but drivers shouldn't have to depend on bonuses to meet their financial goals. As shown in the next slide, mishandled bonuses can be a strong disincentive too. Comments about both pay rate and bonuses are twice as likely to be critical comments when compared to other pay comments. The data indicates that when drivers anticipate bonuses that never come, they're at high risk of turnover. It's important that drivers are clear about bonus goals and the requirements don't shift during the qualification period. Drivers feel cheated when they don't get that anticipated bonus. And if drivers are re reliant on bonuses as a regular part of their pay and need them to reach their financial goals, this is a strong indication that pay rates may be too low. If too many drivers at a company are in this scenario, it may be that time to make certain that pay is aligned with market rates, or you could be at risk of losing good drivers. So when it comes to pay, we have a few suggestions. The first is around transparency. Complex pay structures and fluctuations in load availability lead to confusion among drivers about maximizing earning potential. Look for ways to simplify and stabilize pay structures. This builds trust and minimizes confusion. The next area of pay to improve is certainty. Lack of transparency creates uncertainty for drivers on whether they will be able to meet their financial goals. The stress associated with such uncertainty may make drivers suspicious about the company's intentions. We recommend setting realistic pay expectations to preserve the company's integrity 
in the eyes of your drivers. And the third area to improve is respect. When paychecks don't meet expectations, drivers feel disrespected and unappreciated, or even worse, that they may feel like the company's actively trying to cheat them. Research shows that this sense of disrespect is a large contributor to turnover. Ensure that pay is aligned with market rates to signal respect and appreciation for drivers. Now, the next theme that we'll look at is equipment. Equipment is the second most common theme. When drivers have feedback to share about equipment, it tends to be urgent and likely something is broken or drivers haven't been properly trained regarding how it works. 20% of equipment feedback was about maintenance and often it's about the shop not actually fixing the reported issue or requiring multiple trips to the shop about the same issue. Drivers also share concerns about timeliness of repairs or an understaffed shop. These concerns related directly back to drivers not getting paid for work that isn't driving. Downtime equals a down paycheck. As this driver shared, I spent most of the month broken down and it was simple stuff that could have been done with preventative maintenance. Feedback about facilities made up about 14% of equipment feedback. This included yard conditions, parking availability, the status of restrooms and showers, and other driver amenities like Wi-Fi, driver's lounge, and laundry. In reiterating that these facilities are a driver's home away from home, this driver said, I think we could do a lot better job of cleaning showers. Showers should be cleaned by 7 a.m. and sometimes numerous times throughout the day. 90% of the staff upstairs are working from home, so they would have the extra time to do this. Drivers also share feedback about the lack of empty trailers and the cleanliness of trucks in scenarios when drivers are slip seating. And this is important because drivers want to represent your company well and indicate that the truck cleanliness is a display of respect. Frustrations around maintenance of trucks and trailers are a top critical concern for equipment related feedback. So we have a few recommendations to address these challenges. Set realistic expectations around anticipated shop wait times and encourage drivers to be proactive and anticipating needed maintenance. It's wise to invest in high quality training for shop staff. This will go a long way in keeping drivers happy and moving and also keeping shop staff. Build trust between drivers and the shop by setting a communication policy that ensures maintenance is properly executed and communicated. When it comes to facilities, they are another serious concern for drivers. A few small changes can go a long way. For example, proactively anticipating and repairing potholes. These lead to greater frustrations for drivers if equipment is damaged on the yard, which will ultimately lead to a trip to the shop that could have been prevented if the yard was in better shape. We also see opportunities to have ample parking at yards and available tra trailers their basic expectations that drivers have in order to do their job. And lastly, drivers are away from home and thus your facilities are their home away from home. So managing these and maintaining these amenities comes across as a sign of respect. Now we'll cover the logistics theme and logistics comments include feedback related to operations, load planning, delays and challenges with routes. Logistics appeared most frequently in driver feedback in 2020. And while this theme covers a broad range of topics, oftentimes these concerns are urgent and they can cause drivers to seek employment outside of the industry. As you see here, about 13% of these comments were positive. Drivers often share that this feedback in the heat of the moment, and typically this feedback covers multiple themes like communication and pay. When logistics comes up, often perception is reality whether or not it's true. In our recommended solutions, we'll focus on complete and empathetic communication. Nearly half of logistics comments about planning are, are about planning or scheduling. And as this driver said, I did not appreciate someone telling me I needed to fight through my tiredness to make my first stop. Obviously, they didn't care if I crashed their trucks from falling asleep behind the wheel. Bring up rules that no one ever else told me was a rule or policy. In these scenarios where safety is an added concern, drivers simply feel disrespected. 
Additionally, we know that sometimes comments like this are a misunderstanding. However, perception is reality. It's important to ensure transparency in communications like this in order to build trust. One quarter of the logistics comments are about a lack of work. Comments in this category are filled with concerns about whether or not there's enough work to sustain their ability to make an income. As a reminder, this might not be the case, but the possibility of losing work is a real concern because drivers have seen it happen. It's important to use clear and complete communication in the moments like this driver's feedback. I've been stuck in Denver, Colorado since Monday afternoon. We're working on it is all I keep hearing. If there's nothing available in the area, shift me somewhere else where I may have better luck. At this point, I'm seriously considering quitting and going somewhere else. And finally, driver feedback about loss of time shows up when drivers are watching the time tick away on their day and they feel stuck, just as referenced before in pay concerns. As demonstrated here by this driver who says, downtime and layovers happen. However, five of the last six weeks, I've been left sitting for more than 48 hours. I was given no real shot at any of the bonuses. I'm looking for another job. This is not how you wanna keep your quality drivers. Again, as mentioned before, logistics touches on multiple themes. Being aware of how these concerns intersect other areas of business can help you improve communication and relationships between drivers and staff. So we have a few recommendations, starting with improved transparency. And this driver said, be honest, if you give a driver asset account and for whatever reason, uh, you do something to them and say, I need to do something else. Dispatchers do not pay layover. You should tell the drivers to just be honest. It really helps with the stress. Keeping drivers in the loop when making changes that would affect planning, scheduling, load specifics, or even the expected length of their workday ensures drivers have enough time to adjust their life schedules accordingly. It's also important to set expectations. Drivers feel like they are being intentionally deceived or set up for failure when they are unable to meet the expectations of the company or when they feel like the staff has lied to them. Make sure that your support staff, including the recruiters, have set realistic expectations when speaking with potential and current drivers. Now, many customers were hard hit during COVID and plenty of carriers had to explore new options to find freight. Some drivers felt left in the dark when the freight dried up and they didn't receive any acknowledgement from their employers. Letting drivers know that you're working on potential solutions can keep morale high within the workforce. Now, 2020 was a year unlike any other and our team was quick to start documenting COVID specific uh, comments. The first mention of COVID-19 came in February as the first signs of the pandemic began to affect all the essential workers. These comments were often about safety and how the employers were going to help drivers secure that safety. These comments resulted in carriers tightening up their communication processes and becoming innovative in how they kept drivers in the loop on this ever-changing information in the early stages of the global pandemic. Feedback we've received since has been focused on vaccines and continued support for drivers as they face additional challenges within the pandemic. While COVID-19 mentions were a small percentage of comments overall, they were highly critical. The percentage of these comments considered critical never dropped below 27% throughout the past year, and they even peaked at 38%. About 60% of all comments referencing COVID-19 came to us during March and April, and were included in our early COVID-19 reports. With the immediate uncertainty felt by everyone, drivers were still on the roadways doing their jobs and needing guidance urgently. In April, about 23% of all feedback alone was about COVID-19. And while the volume of these comments has shrunk, we noticed an increase in negative comment sentiment during both peaks of COVID-19 across the United States. What this told us is that during those times in which drivers are experiencing the most uncertainty and pressure, they are looking to their employers for guidance and stability. For example, during these times, we often saw the most concern about potentially getting loved ones sick or feeling unsupported by the possibility of getting sick. We're nearly a year into this pandemic, but it's never too late to improve how we navigate it. We encourage you to be proactive in your communications about resources like testing, test results, quarantine requirements, and vaccinations. 
Let your drivers know that you have their back and will support their intentions to do the responsible thing. For example, we see driver comments like this, sharing that they feel concerned about losing pay for something outside their control. This is an even bigger concern if the drivers have been potentially exposed to COVID-19 on the job. Additionally, drivers are simply looking for answers on the vaccination for when they're able to access it. In many locations across the country, personal protective equipment is still required. And if your company policy requires PPE, make sure you're able to provide it and that you enforce it for all, not just for the driver population. We've seen comments like this where drivers is one of many asking for a free mask. Companies we work with have used this as an opportunity to provide company branded masks and hand sanitizer in order to signal that you hope to support their safety and their role on your team. Additionally, drivers are concerned about maskless customer interactions. And lastly, it's important to double check the double standards within the company culture. Drivers have long felt like second class citizens. And when drivers are required to wear a mask, but they watch office staff interact on camera without a mask, it makes them feel like there's a double standard. And this other driver has acknowledged that office staff are able to travel and return to work despite being potentially exposed to COVID-19 and putting others at risk. The final theme that we will cover is one of our favorites, praise. The praise theme was created in early 2020 after noticing in the 2019 analysis that a large subset of the uncategorized theme was made up of generally positive comments. Things like, I love this company, or I'm grateful to work here, often landed in this zone. And strategically, this feedback is really important for understanding what's working well to retain drivers. 15% of all comments fell in this theme. The praise comments are often shorter than regular comments. They are concise and to the point. Nearly half of all the praise comments received in 2020 included mentions of people. Drivers are very likely to share positive experiences when teammates go above and beyond. Here are some examples of comments drivers shared in the praise theme last year. Things like, I drive when I want, take off when I want, no one hounds me about when to drive and I pick up where I wanna go. Another was, thank you for the anniversary letter and gift card. Very thoughtful to write a note instead of a form letter. The other was, so far I'm extremely pleased. Everything the recruiter promised is being fulfilled. Thank you for the opportunity. We also saw, so far, I'm very impressed with the company. They're very professional and treat me as a professional, not a number. And then finally, because they truly care about the employees, I like the fact that we're part of the family and not just a number. Praise has been a huge part of worker feedback in 2020. Carriers are using it to their advantage in recruiting. And it's no secret, happy drivers make great recruiters. And so we see companies using the praise data in a few different ways. They encourage referrals from workers who reveal after leaving praise comments. They share praise comments with office staff to boost morale. They share praise comments through social media channels and encourage the recruiting team to share the praise comments with potential hires. The world has changed drastically this year. And if I've learned anything, it's that we're all struggling with something. We're not gonna be 100% every day. The past 12 months have taught us how important it is to be more empathetic and listening to our people is a great place to start. While communication challenges were a common thread throughout all the themes and feedback in 2020, it's more clear than ever that when we listen and understand where drivers are coming from, act quickly and tell them what we did, great things will happen. So I wanna thank you all for uh, tuning into this. At this point, we will open the floor for questions. Give a few minutes for the questions to get teed up here. Um, so we uh, got a question here that says, how often do drivers comment? Um, 
it varies. Some comment multiple times a week, some may comment once a month, some may comment every so often. Uh, often I, I see drivers, uh, I think about them in a few different buckets. You've got your early adopters where day one, they've got something they wanna say. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got your technology resistors. And so the group that we collectively have to work to engage are the, the drivers that are a little jaded with their arms crossed like this saying, is the company really gonna do something about all this? And so it's really rewarding when a company starts to change their culture based on the feedback and more and more drivers start to participate because they see that their buddy's issue got resolved. Um, and so some people will share all the time, some occasionally, uh, but it's really rewarding to see it. And uh, there, there is another question on here, pretty light, lightweight one. Uh, will there be access to a recording? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll share the recording. Um, we also have an ebook that's a shortened and condensed version of, uh, of this so that um, you can share that across your team. It's just a handful of pages. Um, and uh, let's see, we've got our next question here. Uh, I may have missed this, um, but, the, but what are the biggest sub-subjects in the logistics area of the, uh, the comment thing? Um, so let's see here. I'll, uh, I'll go back to, to that. Give me one moment. We'll take a look at that. All right. So the um, so as far as logistics, uh, uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, the the biggest issue uh, as far as critical comments in logistics was planning and scheduling. It made up fifty percent of comments. Uh, next was lack of work, which made up about a quarter of the logistics comments. Uh, loss of time made up about twenty percent, and home time. Uh, made up about 8%, but home time is also its own theme inside our feedback as well. Okay, the next question on here, have you learned anything regarding benefits like health, life, and wealth for drivers, um, both company drivers and contractors? Um, so I'll start with the, uh, the owner operator side. Um, it's always a delicate relationship because they are independent contractors, but, um, a lot of them are transitioning from becoming a company driver to being an entrepreneur and being a small business owner. And so some of the innovative companies that have been successful with owner operators are doing the best they can to stay within federal guidelines, but coach people on how to run a small business successfully and how to think differently about it. Uh, compared to a, a company driver. So often they'll aggregate resources um, just to make problems go away. So helping uh, owner operators quickly figure out, here's a resource to do taxes, to go get maintenance, to get discounts on fuel, um, uh, all those sorts of things so that uh, it just makes them easier to do their job and they have to make less individual business decisions as a whole. Um, on the, uh, the company side, um, as far as benefits go, it's just making things as simple as possible so that they're easy un to understand because the more complicated a benefits package is, the more resources that are being drained on your HR team because they're having to deal with uh, queries throughout, throughout most days. Um, all right, so do carriers receive comment information from all participating drivers or just from the carrier that they work for. Uh, so the feedback, uh, the way we have it set up is that a company only sees the specific feedback that they receive. Uh, occasionally, our, our team will do trends reports like this to be able to share our findings across the industry. And I know that our customer success team has occasionally shared in executive reviews with, uh, with our customers, some benchmarking so they can see comparisons about how they're, they're compared to, uh, to peer companies. Um, all right, let's see here. The next question, in what innovative ways are carriers addressing the feedback they receive on WorkHound? Uh, so the, the, first, the first thing is addressing individual issues. 
so what we do at WorkHound is that if there is a, a comment that is critical, so let's say a guy says he's about to quit because his wife isn't on his insurance and he's tired of the runaround and he's gonna leave, well, that's fixable. And so a company can request to connect to this anonymous driver, uh, connect with them directly only to find out that his wife was on the insurance, there was just confusion about paperwork. Um, and that's a win. Happy driver stays at a company he likes. Um, as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, we also see companies address issues by doing one-time notifications. Seeing a comment come in, um, and even if a driver is still anonymous, responding to them to say, hey, we hear you, we know who you are, we know how to fix this. Here's the, uh, the page in the handbook to reference, or here's the solution to your problem. And that way, they're able to resolve issues in a much more faster fashion. Um, but ultimately, we want to create the habit of listening to feedback, acting on it, and telling people what we did. So what's fun is as we start to address these smaller changes and address these individual issues, it gives space for companies to make more strategic changes. So that's making wholesale changes to benefits or the specking of, of the trucks. You know, we mentioned earlier about um, drivers wanting personal protective equipment um, and that led to companies saying, you know what, we're gonna do branded face masks. Um, so it, it is really rewarding to see Drivers share suggestions, companies implement them, and the ripple effect is that more drivers want to, uh, to share because they, they want to help the company become the best version of itself. Um, all right, so the, the next question here, when you started WorkHound, what surprised you most about what drivers shared and how has that evolved? Um, so one of the things that, that we worried about was that uh, this would just be a, a complaint session. This would just be drivers um, complaining, leaving negative feedback all the time. But as you saw in the data, about a third of all feedback is positive. And, uh, and sometimes we hear companies talk about how uh, drivers don't want to work. But a lot of our data shows these people want to work. They want to keep moving. They want to do their best work. Uh, and, and just trucking as a whole often has a um, a bad habit of, of trying to fix what's broken instead of celebrating what's working well. And it's those positive things that can lift up a driver manager who sees a positive comment from a, from a driver and realize that uh, you know, they're doing some things right. Because often driver managers, it's, it's a very thankless job. Uh, so those are some of the things that have uh, stood out to us. Um, you know, I'd say another surprising thing um, was seeing uh, the, the insights about pay. As we talked about earlier, pay is mentioned a lot, uh, but it's not always talking about, I want more money. It's people saying, I don't understand my pay. It's too confusing. I feel cheated. And that leads to that feeling of distrust uh, and perception is reality. So my hope for the industry, especially in 2021 and beyond, is that we continue to find ways to streamline and simplify pay offerings so that people can just understand what they're making and go back out on the road and do their best work instead of feeling like they're having to fight for pay. So the next question we have here, um, have drivers commented on, um, on work counts? Do they appreciate having a voice? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, that's something that uh, a couple of years ago, our, our company set up what we call a wins channel on, uh, on Slack, which is our internal communication tool. And we share some of those wins where drivers thank a company for giving them a voice or uh, just being grateful to have work count as an outlet to, to share th frustrations and say, hey, I was mad. I wanted to throw one over the fence. Thank you for letting me do this. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, it's incredibly rewarding for our team to, to see people feel uh, or express gratitude for having a voice. Um, but what's even more rewarding is watching companies change how they operate by taking that feedback seriously and, and making changes to make their company the best version of itself. I mean, we've often believed that um, feedback is a goldmine. And uh, you know, if you dig through those insights, you'll find great perspectives there. Um, the next theme or next question is around themes. And so it says, how are themes categorized from comments? Uh, is, uh, and so uh, we do a couple things. Uh, we, we use a combination of keyword and sentiment analysis, but 
we also have an incredible customer success team that works hand in hand with every single company. So they're reviewing the feedback with our, our customer base. They're on calls weekly to talk about the feedback to help identify the trends and the issues. Uh, so for us, it's part software and part service that has really been um, our, uh, our recipe for, for successful uh, results. Um, so it's a combination of those things and how we identify the comments, place them in themes, and then make sure we do something with that data. Um, all right, the next question we have here, are drivers complaining about their ELD unit not working properly? For sure. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than, than having constraints being put on your, your job and then uh, these constraints not working properly. It's, it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, there's a bunch of ELD solutions out there. They're all trying to, uh, to figure out the best way to operate. Um, and it's a combination of forcing technology on people that are often technology resistors, having to do it in a large population that is distributed, there's an immense amount of challenges and it's tough to make the updates. Uh, I've heard of several companies continuing to switch ELD providers in the past two years, just trying to find the right one that just makes the problem go away. Um, so yeah, it's, it's certainly a challenge. And uh, what's, what's been helpful for companies and seeing the feedback through WorkHound has been identifying what sort of challenges are there. Because more often than not, it's a training challenge as opposed to a technology challenge. And if we can train our people up, then they can be more successful without us having to completely change out systems. All right, let's see here. Um, all right, it looks like our final question. Um, any predictions for the industry in 2021? So first off, we all know that predictions are a very dangerous game because I'm sure many of us were asked the same question about this time last year and a lot of our predictions were wrong because none of us called for pandemic. Uh, so I'm, I'm very hesitant to make any predictions for 2021, but what, what I have seen in 2020, uh, I think will carry over. I think that the trucking industry will continue to embrace technology in ways that it never has before. Trucking got a bad rap historically for being uh, a technology resistor or being 10 years behind the times compared to other industries. But I can tell you in the past 12 months, trucking has worked really hard to catch up and be more innovative. Uh, so instead of dragging on decisions about what technology to use, companies are really focused on, we have a problem, this tool will help us solve it, let's get it rolling and, and keep moving forward instead of uh, just delaying a decision. Uh, so that's been really cool to see. Um, and then the other thing that uh, we do believe will continue on is uh, companies continuing to be more empathetic, curious about, uh, about what drivers need. Um, what we saw this year is, is drivers dealt with a pandemic and social unrest and just an ever-changing landscape of what was going to happen in the industry. Uh, companies realized they have a role to play in being the co-pilot of a driver. And what I know to be true, whether you're in the office or whether you're on the road or you're in the shop, people will remember how they were treated by their companies during this time. And that will become a company's brand. So then it really comes down to um, asking, are we the company that is going to be remembered as the one that, uh, that stood up and did the right thing and, uh, and made sure we took care of our people? Or were they the ones that just ran things through um, and people are going to be bitter about that for a very long time? Okay, well, I believe that we have uh, covered most of the questions here. Um, if, uh, if we can, let's jump to the uh, contact slide just as we wrap up. There we go. Um, so I wanna thank you all for taking the time to attend today. Uh, again, I wanna thank Mark, Corey, Paul, and, and Katie from our team for putting this report together. It was a ton of work, but um, we've been able to reveal a lot of really unique insights about 
the industry and, uh, and what drivers are, are really looking for in this wild time. Uh, if our team can be helpful, um, shoot me a note. I'm happy to, uh, to uh, direct it the best way possible. My email is max at workhound.com. Uh, and again, because you signed up for this today, we will share a recording of this. We'll also share an ebook with you that you'll be able to, uh, to download and share with others on your team. Uh, and again, thank you for attending. Hope you have a great uh, rest of the day and a great start to the year. Thanks so much and take care.